eight regionals, three weeks, and they come to a close in Seattle, Washington for the West Regional. Hi, everybody. Welcome back inside the CrossFit Games Update Show Studios. Sean Woodland with Tommy Marquez and Pat Sherwood wrapping up the final day of three weeks of regional competition. Great finish out there in the West. We'll recap that in a second. But first, let's take you back to the beginning of day number three, the Meridian Regional in Europe wrapping up this morning on the men's side. Jonakowski's just 20 years old, and he's making his second trip to the Games. He won four events, including the first three. Jorvan Gubmanson and Lucas Hogberg are also going back. Stephen Fawcett becomes the first man from England to qualify for the Games in the Open Era. And Phil Hesketh, with a great finish, beats Philip Yang Fisker by five places in Event 7 to get himself into the CrossFit Games. And Jonakowski spoke with Amanda Krenz. Did you have any idea how dominant you would be? No, honestly. No, I, no, I didn't. Are you just being humble? Uh, I don't know. Besides, I had really, I've been training with Hogberg, and I knew he was in really tough, tough shape, and I didn't know like uh, pretty much anything about other guys. I was pretty confident with my shape, but but honestly, I had no idea I could do this good. Have we found the heir apparent to Miko Salo? Ooh, I mean, that's, that's a tall order. I'm not quite ready to say that yet. You know, he did great at the games, Koski did in his rookie year last year. If he has another great year where he moves up the leaderboard even more so, then I think I will bestow that title upon him. That's a lot to live up to. But he's a phenomenal athlete, was never in danger from day one to day three, led at the end of every single day. And he had multiple first place finishes, four to be exact, only one finish outside of the top 10. That was a snatch at 237 pounds. So, I mean, an incredibly well rounded athlete. He won the European Regional last year, comes back, you know, with increased level of competition this year, and throws down again. So, he's legit. Meanwhile, Phil Hesketh gets himself into the games in the final event. He needed a big performance and had to beat Philip Yang Fisker, and he did it by five spots. Yeah, and he had a strong performance to close out his weekend of competition. He came into the uh, final day in sixth place. He was 34 points back, so looking a little bleak, but he takes eighth in event six. Fisker takes 22nd. He ends up going into the final event only six points back, and he steps up huge, takes a third place in event seven, moves his way up into fifth, makes up 47 points in total on day number three. And, you know, he's out of the Africa region, and he's the only uh, male or female athlete to go to the games from one of the Africa, Asia, or Latin America. So standing up for the small regions, you know? <laughs> On the women's side, we thought it might be an Icelandic sweep in the top five spots. It nearly was. And the woman who won it wasn't the woman who we thought would win it. Sarah Sigmund's daughter out dueling her countrywoman, Katrin David's daughter, and Annie Thoris' daughter. Kristen Holty, the only woman not from Iceland in the top five. And Turda Helgadotter finishing in fifth. She's going back to the games as well. Coming out party for Sarah Sigmund's daughter, though, in the Meridian Regional, and she spoke with Amanda Krenz. Sarah, first of all, congratulations. First place at the Meridian Regional. What sort of expectations did you have for yourself coming into this weekend? Uh, I just wanted to make top five. I just thought that fifth place was, be, uh, was my goal, that uh, fourth or third or second or first is <laughs> just a bonus, so I'm very happy. Were you surprised at all by your first place finish? Yes, really surprised. I did not expect it. What sort of training and hard work has gone into making you the athlete that we saw this weekend? I've just been training. <laughs> like, um, I got a new coach, like a weightlifting coach, and he's helped me a lot. And I've been like visualizing more and like working on the physical side more rather than like just training. That's helped me a lot. And what's your motivation to do this? I don't know, it's just so much fun, and like I'm always surprising myself that I can do things that I never expected to do, so yeah. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, given who she beat, given how dominant she was, I've said this a million times, but you got to put her in the category of, of contenders when she gets to Carson. Yeah, definitely not your average games rookie coming into the games in July. You look at what she did on day three, she was a point back behind catching David's daughter and Annie going into event number six. And, you know, we saw this workout give some of the newbies trouble, especially with those strict deficit handstand push-ups. She doesn't go out and just win it, but she sets an event record. So she's going to walk out of regionals with the best time on that workout. 
Then she goes into event number seven, does the muscle ups unbroken, takes a second place overall, just lays any doubt to rest on whether or not she can hang with the best of the best and beating Andy Thor's daughter at regionals. And this isn't a numerical st statistic, but I feel it carries some weight. Okay. So I was actually at a different competition over the course of the year, and Sigmund's daughter was there throwing mm -hmm. down. And I was, you know, didn't really know her, but she was doing really well, and so I just wasn't quite sure. Sam Briggs was there, my European advisor. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this Sigmund's daughter, is like, is she the real deal? And Briggs was like, oh yeah, she's 100% legit. So, I mean, there's a stamp of approval for you. And because we like to give people things to kind of mull over, little hypotheticals, and we can have fun with numbers, we plugged in Sigmund daughter's score in all the regionals that have been completed, and this is where she would have finished. She would have won the Pacific by eight points over Carl Webb, would have dominated the East, would have won in Atlantic, would have run away with California. The only time she would have finished second is in the South, and that's Camille leblanc bazinet by 15 points. But if you take Camille leblanc bazinets score and do the same thing and plug them into the Meridian Regional, Sarah Sigmund's daughter still wins. So, so Sigmund's daughter is going to throttle some just, people. Yeah, that's oh, what that graph man. tells it'll, me. It'll, it'll, be, uh, it'll be interesting when we get to Carson. Again, you know, unknown and unknowable there. It's a whole different ballgame. On the team side of things, five teams that are going to the CrossFit Games. CrossFit Yas was on top of the leaderboard for the majority of the competition, but it was the final event where CrossFit Solid took over first place. CrossFit Reykjavik Virtuosity in third. CrossFit Turicum and then CrossFit Fabrican also getting themselves in on the final event. Let's head out now to the west where we had a crazy finish there, probably the closest finish that we saw throughout any of the regionals. After six events, this is what the leaderboard looked like going into that muscle-up sprint clean ladder. Tyson Takasaki sat in first place for the first time all competition long. Brent Fakowski was in second. Lucas Parker, Joe Scally, and then Cody Anderson sat in fifth. Simons and Sager were on the outside looking in. And then the buzzer sounded for the start of event number seven. And you may as well just take in all these names, put them in a the blender, hit go, and then see what happens. All the athletes getting to the muscle-ups at about the same time. They got through them relatively quickly. But it was Cole Sager who was among the first group off. He's on the left of your screen. He got to the 265-pound barbell first. Sager wins the event. He's going to Carson. Meanwhile, a bunch of other athletes came in. Kevin Simons in the middle of your screen finished, and then Joe Scally in the black shirt. He gets in. Tyson Takasaki and Brent Fakowski were bringing up the rear. Fakowski and Takasaki among the last two men to finish in this heat, and it would cost Fakowski, but Takasaki would survive. Let's now look at the leaderboard after seven events, and one through nine all change. Lucas Parker is your winner, followed by Cole Sager, who goes from seventh to second. Fikowski went from second to seventh, and for the second straight year, misses out on going to the games in the final event. Kevin Simons is third. Tyson Takasaki drops to fourth. Joe Scally finishes in fifth. Only six points separated second from seventh, Lucas Parker spoke with Mike Arsenault following day three. Lucas Parker, the king of Canada West and now the king of the West Regional. How does that feel? Feels amazing. Um, it was uh, just a dogfight all weekend, a lot more sort of volatile and just uh, unpredictable. Um, so for me to come out on top at the end is, is just, I'm, I'm super high right now. It's awesome. It was a little bit different path than you typically take because you started not in the last heat, whereas in Canada West, you're usually in the top heat from start to finish. You had to scratch and claw your way back. How was that different mentally for you? Uh, it, it was tough. I mean, at the regional level, I'm usually sort of on top most of the weekend. However, I have had a few uh, CrossFit Games performances where I've needed to sort of, you know, come back from some poor performances. So I tried to sort of draw on that and say, hey, you know, if I can, if I can show up at the Games for a few events, I can show up here. And, and that's what I tried to do today. And how long of a rest do you have before you start training for Carson? Uh, I'm going to take a couple days off. Um, and then, you know, it's we're the last round of regionals, so we have the, the least amount of time to prep. So I sort of got to get on my horse and, and giddy up and, uh, and get to California. Well, congratulations, Lucas Parker. First place overall in the West Regional. Thank you, Mike. And, and Lucas Parker was sort of the calm in this West Regional storm. He was there the whole time just trucking along. Yeah, and it's very similar to what we saw with Scott Panchik, where in the end, consistency pays off. He never finished outside of the top 10. All seven events, 10th or better. 
He was first after day number one, third after day number two. This is his fourth regional victory. And really just to show how consistent he's been, not just this year, but for the past four years. Since 2011, he's competed in 33 events at regionals. Never once finished outside the top 10. That is how you win regionals. Yeah. And hopefully he can have a, a better result at the games than he did last year. Meanwhile, Cole Sager was on the outside looking in. He jumps up five spots. Great regional for him when it's all said and done. He'll set an event record in Tommy V and then wins event seven. He brought a tremendous amount of excitement to that final mm -hmm. heat, which is exactly what we wanted to do. He was having a, a good regionals, no doubt about it, but after event six, he had slipped into seventh place, 15 points away from a qualifying spot, and he knew if he was gonna go back to the games for a second time, it was gonna be because of an all-out performance on the final event with the muscle-ups and the cleans. That's exactly what he did. Took first on that event, one minute, 19 seconds, just barely beating out Lucas Parker by half a second, diving into our cameraman <laughs> across the finish line. And we'll see him back there. He won the Northwest Regional last year, so good to see him coming so close again to first place. Let him know that wasn't a fluke. This is a guy that deserves to be at the Games. Before we changed the format, Canada West only had two spots for the men, women, and teams going to the Games. We changed the format this year, and now three Canadians are going on the men's side in the West. Lucas Parker, Tyson Takasaki, and Joe Scally. And really, it took a heroic effort from Cole Sager in that final event to prevent Canada West from taking four spots in that region. And I think this is really kind of one of the neat things that's coming out of this new super regional format, essentially, is that we're having all these different regions kind of vie for these spots and kind of create some pride amongst mm -hmm. the different areas amongst the world and in the United States, and especially in a situation like this where you have Canada and the U.S. combining. I mean, it was really exciting. Three Canadians this year. We'll see what happens next year. Okay, there's a lot of training needs to be done between now and then. But I mean, I wasn't surprised to see Takasaki at the end. It's really great to see Scali come in there. Yeah. He wanted it so bad. He's a great character to follow yep. in the social media. So I think it'll be a lot of fun at the games. Cody Anderson and Brent Fakowski were in qualifying spots before event seven. The two of them miss out by a combined total of just two points. Fakowski, man, yeah. it's heartbreaking. Two years in a row. Shades of last year, you know, he starts the day in first place. It looked like he almost had a spot locked up. He had no finishes lower than eighth before event six happened. He finished his 20th. He couldn't even lock out that last handstand push-up until almost the buzzer. Then drops to 14th in an event number seven. Puts him all the way down to seventh. Last year at regionals, he was in second place. He locked, missed out by a point after he couldn't finish that final overhead squat. And really, I mean, you got to feel for the guy. Two years in a row, all that training, all that preparation comes down to a matter of seconds. Three points total in two years. Keep him from the games twice. It's a, it's a rough finish for him. Yeah, then the other side is Cody Anderson. We loved watching the stuff that he was able to do at the games. I think people were pulling for him because of the excitement that he brings and just missing out, you know, barely. Couldn't have been any closer. So one point. He missed qualification by one point. And now it's so easy to sit back, right, an armchair quarterback and say, well, this on this event, if you've done this in this event, but it's so funny, you never know how close it's going to be at the very end. And I bet across all the regionals, if you rewound a lot of the tape and even just watched event one, Randy, how milliseconds sure. were three or four spots and how many people jogged to that finish mat instead of sprinted to that finish mm -hmm. mat. Now, seven events later, they're probably like, man, those two placings, that could have mm -hmm. given me two placings. So it's just kind of a testament to how tight these races are and everything adds up. Yeah, the women's competition just concluded at the West Regional. We have the final standings for the women and Emily Abbott. She goes wire to wire and wins it with 584 points. Carlene Matthews will finish second. Jessica Kaur, Reagan Huckabee and Alex Parker rounding out the top five. And Emily Abbott spoke with Mike Arsenault following a very successful day three. Emily, you won the Canada West last year. This year, the competition was a little bit stiffer as we combined the Northwest and Canada West, but you still came out on top. What was the key? Uh, I think the key, as usual, is just consistency um, and really trying to up my gymnastics game against these stellar, stellar girls. Uh, but I just, you know, every workout, every day was a new day, a new battle, um, and I knew I could not step off that gas pedal, so. Was strength a focus of yours over the past year? Because it seemed like some of the heavier weights, you had a little bit easier time dealing with them this weekend as opposed to last year and at the games last year. Oh, hell yeah. Like, all I did was a ton of strength. Like, my push-pull, my upper body was uh, kind of embarrassing last year. So that was something that I knew I had to up if I wanted to compete at this level. 
Atmosphere. First place at regionals right now, but everything's going to reset as we head to Carson and the Reebok CrossFit Games. What do you need to work on over the next few weeks? Gymnastics all damn day. I'm going to be a gymnastics phenom by, by the time Carson rolls around. Right, we are looking forward to seeing that. Emily Abbott, first place in the West Region. Thank you, Mike. And Emily Abbott you know, started out great with back-to-back -back wins, and then it was, I don't want to say smooth sailing, but then she just had to stay consistent. Yeah, really. She, she started out day number one perfect. She won both events. Then she follows that up with a second in event number three. At no point in the competition was she ever out of first place. Coming into this region, we talked about how Emily Crothers and Roy Zambard both weren't in this region anymore, not competing. And who was going to answer the bell and kind of step forward to the forefront of this region? And Emily Ab Abbott did that. She had one finish outside the top seven with an 18th in event number four. She said she's going to attack her weakness. And really, she showed a lot of character and heart there. You know, she, you can tell she loves training. She really wants to improve. And I think her qualification for the games last year and getting a taste of what that top competition is like has really paid off and showed how she's prepared this year. And then Reagan Huckabee picked a great time to win her only event of regionals. She kind of did what Cole Sager did, right? I mean, she mm -hmm. just showed up and took it. It was great to see. She entered day three of the competition, not in a qualifying spot. She was in seventh place. Had a solid finish on event six with fifth, but on the muscle and squat cleans, I mean, there's no one around her. She's finishing the final barbell all by her lonesome. Took first place in that two minutes and two seconds, earning the fourth out of five qualifying spots to go to the games. She went last year where she took 30th place, and it'll be great to see her again. Reagan Huckabee saved her best for last. Lane 5 Athletics in the team competition at the West Regional saved their best for last. Back-to-back -back wins in events 6 and 7 get them on top of the leaderboard. They had 607 points, the only team to crack the 600-point plateau. They finished first, followed by CrossFit and Marysville. Verdon Green, That they spent some time on top of the leaderboard. They wind up in third. Fort Vancouver and Team Tyrannus wound, rounding out the top five. We now know all the teams, all the men, all the women who will be heading to the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games in Carson. Ten total countries are represented, more veterans than rookies, and quite an age span, 18 and 37. The average age of our games competitors, 26.7. It's going to be a fun game. 27 rookies, man. I cannot wait to see yeah. the rookies throw down. We, uh, that's it. We're at the end. Regionals are now done. It's can't been, it. It's been a fun three weeks. If you spent five minutes, a couple hours, a couple days with us, we want to thank you for being part of all this. We had a blast bringing it to you. I hope you had a good time watching it. A lot of people to thank who are responsible, who do all the, you know, the real work here to make sure that you guys get to see what you need. Uh, can we punch up the, uh, the control room shot and show the people who are doing the real work? Oh, That's the crew go. right there. Uh, I'm just going to thank everybody that I, that I see in there. We have Charlie Doobie, our producer, uh, Alan Brum, our director, uh, Doug Ferris, who's our technical director, uh, we got Mike Shames, our tape producer, uh, Nick Marquez, Hilly Brumfield, one of our production assistants, Scott Rogers is on uh, Chiron, Mark Billingsby, uh, our editor, Vince Sanchez, can't see him, but he's locked away in an audio booth, thanks to him, uh, Mike McPherson, our stats guy, Katie Rowan, our assistant producer, um, and then Will Duncan, our, one of our engineers who really is responsible for building all this stuff and, and helping you guys, you know, Put all this, uh, put all this together, and get that to you. Also, all the volunteers at regionals, thank you, uh, Tim uh, for help, Tim Rowan for Tim Rollins. I, I'm sorry, I can't. Can you give me his last name one more time? Tim Rowell. Sorry, Tim. I apologize. Thanks to you, all of our editors, uh, and and the final guy we got to thank is our coordinating producer, Joe Novello. Without him, none of this happens. He uh, he has worked some long, tireless hours to bring this guys to this guys, uh, you all, you guys, and. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out, man. <laughs> I'm ready time for, for the games. Yeah. Time for beer. Time for a little rest time. Yeah, we will, uh, we'll see you guys soon, man. Up next, it's the 2015 Reebok CrossFit Games, and we're going to leave you with one of the best moments of all the regionals. This is CrossFit Fabrican. They had to wait till the final event, and they had to wait till beyond that to find out whether or not they made it to the CrossFit Games. of course.